Christ of marriage. And um, I'm going to be reading from the book of Genesis 2, 24 to 25. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked, and they were not ashamed. So that is the fourth part of the pillars. Transparency is something that is so important in marriages. We find out that in today's marriage, there's no lot of transparency. There are a lot of things that people hide. Uh, husband will be hiding from the wife. Wife also will be hiding from the husband. Some will do investment, their husband will not know. Some will even go to the extent of having children after their uh, matrimony at home and their wife will not know. It's put a sign. The husband or the wife will not know. So things are happening in our generation. And if we really want marriages to work as church, we must be able to speak more about marriages because we know that this will be of great help to the all coming marriages and the people that are already in marriage. Every couple have to leave, learn to leave. That is the three pillars of marriage. Learn to leave. No matter how close you are to your parents, either you are the wife or the husband, when you get married, look for ways to cleave to your wife. Look for ways to cleave to your husband so that both of you can become one flesh. I've often said that when living is not proper, cleaving can never, can never, you can never experience cleaving. Anytime that living is not proper, because if living is not proper, it means that somebody that will be in steering and is driving the car, meaning it can be your parents, it can be the boys, and it can be the girls, and it can be an auntie, it can be a friend. But you and your husband, you must be together as one flesh, clip together. And remember that word clip means to glue. Both of you must glue together as husband and wife so that nobody will be able to tear you apart. You know, when there's proper gluing, there's no how they want to tear both of you apart that they will not take out of part of you to the other part. Hallelujah. Tonight, all answers that the people of God will be giving, believers will be giving today, will be according to the three pillars of marriage. I repeat again, all answers that will be given tonight will be according to the three pillars of marriage that is given in the scripture. Praise the Lord. Marriage is about living. Um, uh, um, uh, marriage is about living according to God's plan. That's what marriage is all about. It's not our own plan. Ma God is the master plan of marriage. And when it comes to marriage, if the marriage is going to be successful, if your marriage is going to be good, it must not be auntie's idea, mama's idea, papa's idea, anybody's idea. Anything that is not scriptural, that is out of the scriptural, is not God's plan for our marriage. And you know, many times people come with different kinds of idea into marriage. People come to the idea, with the idea into marriage that I will still do what I want to do. I just want children. I'll be living in the husband's house. But, you know, I can nobody can tear me away from my parents. When we live that kind of life, there's no how you are going to enjoy your marriage. There's nobody that's saying that's... You should, you know, there should be separation between you and your parents. But the Bible says, leave, leave. That is, now you glue to your husband or you glue to your wife. That is, whatever happens in your home remains in your home. And both of you should look for a way where you'll be able to settle it. Hallelujah. The reason why many uh, marriages are going through many troubles today is because we have too many traffic in our marriage. I repeat that again. The reason why we have too many troubles in our marriages today, and a lot of marriages today, there's too much traffic in many marriages. Auntie is talking, sister is talking, father is talking, mother is talking. So at the end of the day, you are confused. Praise the Lord. Couples need time to tell together. Couple needs time to grow together. You know, it's not something, uh, it's not something that will happen in a day. Aha. Uh -huh. And uh, we can never obtain God's kind of marriage if we have too many crowds in our marriage. Because this one will speak in favor of that, that one will speak in favor of that, that one will speak in favor of that. 
when we talk about marriage, it's only about two people, two people coming together to become one. So try as much as possible that you don't have too many traffic in your marriage. Every marriage, I want us to know tonight, have a teaching period. Either we want to agree or you don't want to agree before we leave to, uh, we give it to the panel tonight. Every marriage, I that I'm speaking, I have my own teaching period. Everybody has his own teaching period. And teaching period is a bit critical, even for parents, when they have infants, when they have baby, you all understand. Teaching period at times in, my, in, in the life of our children is between the age of three months up to about three years when they have to bring out their teeth. And you know that it's a difficult time for parents as they go through teaching. You, you find that there is pain, you take them here, the temperature, the, uh, this and that. It's the same thing also in marriage. From three months of your marriage, there are a lot of things that we, you open your eyes to. There are a lot of things that you don't understand. There are a lot of things that you see and you think that you were going to cope with as you get into marriage. Then the, from the third month, you find out that there's a bit of shaking. You find out that uh, you the talking, that one also be talking because now your nakedness to each other is not obvious. You can now see each other very well. And there are things that you think that, oh, maybe it's not real. You begin to see it as real, maybe in the habit of your spouse. And as both of you begin to live together, if care is not taken, that will be the beginning of fight, fighting. We need to understand that every marriage have a teaching period. The same way children from the age of three, uh, sorry, from the age of three months, from three months to, to the age of um, uh, three years, have teaching period. Again, when it comes to marriage, from day one to about six years, your marriage is like that, it's not really stable. To some people, they just have it. You know, things are stable, things are fine, but along the way, is still waiting for them somewhere where some things will happen and it will be a bumpy, a bumpy ride. But every marriage has a teaching period. I repeat again, every marriage has a teaching period. So we must learn to what? To accommodate one another. What did I say? To accommodate one another. Because there are things that we use, it's like, it's real. It's not like you are watching film again. You are now in it. Both of you are acting. You are, both of you are actors, so you can see each other's fault more than before when you were just dating or you are just courting. I still have about five minutes. Let me say this to add to this. Uh, Proverbs 15, 23, it says, there are times that there is war, but it's not the right season. It's not the right time. Another thing that is so in, important in our marriages is the timing of you speaking. What did I say? Timing of you speaking. There are times that you want to say something and you are really boiling. You, you know, you have something to say, but it's not the right timing. And if care is not taken, if you have to speak at the time because you have word, I want us to learn today, either hold or young in marriage, it's not every time you have words that, you know, you have to speak. There are times you hold back and it takes the grace of the Holy Spirit. It takes the Holy Spirit helping you to be able to hold back, not to speak every time you feel that, oh, you've seen something, I have to say it now. I used to be like that. Everything I see, I want to say it. I don't want to bottle up. And I keep getting into trouble. I keep getting into trouble. I keep getting into trouble. Then gradually, I began to learn that there is not everything that I see that I have to say. As I was growing up in marriage, I've said this many times, Whatever happened in my marriage, I will tell my sister, I will tell my mom, I will tell my, pa my daddy, and every time I, I go on like that. But I find out that it wasn't really helping. It wasn't helping our marriage. Because many a times, when we are finished fighting, when we are finished our argument, you know, they still carry it. They still carry it. And anytime they see me, the first greeting they will ask me, hope your husband is not causing you trouble again. And after a while, it becomes something that is so shameful for me that why would they be asking me every time? Is there no trouble in your home? Is there no trouble? Because everybody, they are part of the traffic in my marriage. So we must all back. We must all back. Marriage is for life. And anytime you have, you, you know, you have this mindset that, you know, you can go. It's like if the shoe does not fit, I will leave. It's not a good idea. 
I want to encourage everybody that is listening to me tonight that we should try as much as possible to please live a life. Because always remember, our children are involved in our marriage. It's not something that is just with you and your husband again. It's you and your husband and your children. And the moment you leave those children, it's like tearing some things apart in the life of your children. So we must try as much as possible. There are times that you need to hold back, not for your own sake, for the sake of those children, not only for those children, for you to live a healthy life. You see, every time we are fighting in our marriage does not help our health. So we must try as much as possible to make sure that where there is war, we have something to say. Look for the right timing. Communication is key. In fact, somebody asked me, I believe it was last week, Wednesday, and he called and he asked me this message, I mean, question. I said, Pastor, I want you to tell me what is the most important thing in marriage? And I smiled. I said, why are you asking me that uh, question? And I said, the most important key in marriage is communication. Everything about marriage is communication. Once we are communicating, things will be right. But remember tonight, it's not every time you have words that you have to say it. You must learn at times to ask yourself, is this the right time? Should I hold on a bit or should I say it now? I believe I've said in the past, once I'm hungry, once my husband comes in, we know that I'm upset. And once he see me, we ask me, what is it? I say, there's nothing. But my attitude is saying there is something. I say, there is nothing. So we say, before I, I will tell him, I want you to eat. So we tell me, I'm not eating. Tell me what's happening. I will say, there's nothing. Nothing is happening. But after a while, I began to, you know, also to learn that I don't have to carry everything I'm facing at every time. I have to make sure that, you know, I, I mature in, in life. And I want to appeal to every one of us tonight that God will grant us grace. We will mature in our walk with God and we also mature in our marriages. So tonight, without taking too much of your time, we have wonderful people of God again tonight that will be part of our panel. Praise the Lord. I'm starting with a moderator for tonight and that is the person of uh, Minister Adetomu Ogunyemi. Minister Adetomu Ogunyemi. Let's just appreciate him on our screen. Let's show our, uh, let's show our love. Let's show our love. Let's show our love. Again tonight, part of our panel again, we have Pastor Adeyemi Adesonya. We have Pastor Adeyemi. Let's show them love. Let's show them love. We have also as part of the panel in the men's side, we have Minister Chima Ehenacho. So we have Minister Chima Ehenacho tonight as part of our panel. Again, we have Brother Ade Ola Razaki. Let's show them love. Let's show them love. Show them that you love them. Show them that you appreciate them tonight. Praise the Lord. God is going to use this vessel to minister to us tonight. And we have Brother Dawudu. Aha. Can we have Brother Dawudu? I want you to please show him also some love. Praise the Lord. And for our women, we have tonight Sister Fumi Awoluyi. Let's appreciate her. Let's show her love. Let's show her love. Keep showing them love. Keep showing them love. So that we encourage them to speak when it's time for them to speak. Praise the Lord. Then we have Sister Bumi Dada. Sister Bumi Dada. Let's appreciate these women tonight. Then we have Sister Onyi Damola Ajiboye. You better appreciate them. You don't know next month. Maybe it's going to be your turn. So get ready. If you don't appreciate them now, they won't appreciate you when it's your time. Praise the Lord. So without taking your time, I want to hand over at this point to Minister Tong Ogunyemi. Minister Tong Ogunyemi, you are welcome tonight. I hand over to you as you lead us as a moderator for tonight bringing a question up and helping the people to be able to answer tonight. Praise the Lord, somebody. Thank you very much, our Senior Pastor Atinuke Adesanya. God bless you for this great initiative. Just to let you all know that this will be taking place every month. We were all blessed last month by the panel that helped us to, you know, answer some of the very um, challenging questions and, you know, times that people are going through. 
without taking our time tonight, you know, mommy has been very helpful. She has introduced the panel. Um, they've got quite a number of years of experience. I'm sure their combined years in marriage is more than anyone on this platform. So we thank God for you and we look forward to what God is going to use you for. Don't worry about how long you've been married. It's not how long, but how well. So there is something that each and every one of you can share with us tonight to help us. Without taking too much of our time, my first question is, is it good for parents to always have a say in our marriage? Now, this question is like a tree with many branches. So I'm going to read uh, most of the questions that relate to that. Um, another part of that question is, my spouse provides details of all issues that transpire in our home with their mother who constantly interferes. Most of our arguments and fights relate to this issue and I'm fed up as it seems the mother rules our home even when she's not physically with us. Please help me. I will start this with Sister Fumi Awuli. Can you help us? My in-law is always interfering. Is it a good thing for parents to always have a say in our, in our marriage. I know your um, mother, you've got um, your daughters-in-laws and maybe sons-in-law, so maybe you can help us. Is it good for parents to always have a say in our marriage? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, for, first of all, I think, like a pastor was preaching last week or so, and she mentioned, and the Bible says, and a man will live his father and mother will cleave to his wife, and two which shall become one. So a lot of time, men or young men need to let go, because now they are married to their woman. So they need to learn, okay, this is my woman. You need to learn to share things together, iron things together, talk together, rather than going back to your mother and listening everything. So because the mother will be speaking from her own experience. And a lot of time, the experience is not valid in these days and time. And that will cause more grief, that will cause more argument in the marriage. Because the mother will be talking from her own experience. Especially even the mother is not a, a, a Christian. So she'll be talking, maybe she wasn't treated well by her whole mother-in-law. So she's had that in her. And she'll be instilling that into the son. That, oh, this is the way you should do it. That's the way you should do it. Because what she didn't enjoy in the marriage, son will like, okay, why? She, in a way, not consciously, it's like, I didn't enjoy that in marriage. And I, I received that as norm. So that should be okay for my child or for my son to live that way or not to treat the woman the way she expects to be treated because she thinks, okay, why should she be treated in, in, a, in a better way than I was treated? So the answer to that specific question in nutshell, the man should be running to the woman. They need to sit down together. They need to talk together. Like pastor said, communication is the key in any marriage. When the communication breaks down, then that's the start of any trouble in any marriage. Thank you very much, Sister Fumi, for that. You've sort of highlighted more about the boys or the men going to their parents. There are female or, or daughters who go to their parents as, as well. Or, you know. So, Minister Chima, what is your take on that? Should our parents interfere in our marriage? And what should either the man or the woman do? in order to prevent that. I know Sister Fumi has talked about communication and mommy did talk about many traffic in marriages and all that, we should try and avoid that. But what can you advise this sister to do? I guess I, it's about, it's about create, creating, creating boundaries actually. Creating boundaries and accepting and knowing what should be, you get my point. Um, let go if 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 it's the if it's the man and the man takes control and is in control of his family and creates the creates the boundaries and creates and Minister Chima, please speak louder. I said I said my I said that it's it would be nice for for the man or the woman to create boundaries uh, and know what should be shared or what should not be shared. Um, uh, uh, the, the, the whole idea of wanting to find oh, come to, to create a tea party situation in your marriage will ruin your marriage. The tea party means, like Mommy has said separately, that you find somebody that wants to be in your side, in your corner of the of the of, of, the, of the ring. Uh, somebody that will seem to hear you and want to listen. I want to see you. 
or wants to comfort you in, your, in a way. So I, I, I believe fairly that one of the practical solutions will be boundaries, boundaries, that this boundary you cannot and, and these boundaries are set from the foundation of the marriage and the relationship. You are, not very, you are not very clear and you are not very loud, Minister. I'm not very loud. Wow. Can, 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 can your, you... your, volume, your volume, maybe you need to move closer to the speaker. I am, I am literally close to the speaker. Can you hear me? It's a bit better now. Oh, is it better now? Yes, it is. Okay, wonderful. So, so what I'm saying is that in essence is this, that I believe practically that we need to create boundaries, right? Boundaries, communication boundaries. And know what can be shared and what cannot be shared. It is not everything that you can you can tell people, okay? Or else they'll become they'll come they'll come clogs in that in that marriage. So um, if if in practical times you are able to take, take control and understand in this marriage there are only two of us. There can't be a three per, third person in this marriage, and you understand what should be shared and what should not be shared, and create those loving boundaries. I think you should be fine. Thank you so much. So what Minister Chima was saying there about creating um, clear boundaries, both spouses creating clear boundaries. Um, so thank you, um, Sister Fumi and Minister Chima for that. So um, both parties, I think they need to sit together and create those boundaries, what is acceptable. And like mommy has said earlier, and she keeps telling us, there has to be leaving and cleaving. Praise the Lord. So now, th this is still on the issue. One more thing, just to build on what we had told us previously, as well, part of the constitution of that family, part of the constitution of that family is boundary creation, loving boundary mm. creation. Once the constitution is written and is agreed, it becomes easier for everybody to apply themselves and implement it going forward. Yes. Yes, thank you so much. And I think in order for the constitution to work, I think a key thing also is that both parties must understand that they are working together. It's not that one person is, you know, you're working together as a partnership. Now, still on, the, on this topic of um, uh, uh, mother-in-laws, um, there is another question that says, my mother-in-law treats me disdainfully most times because their child informs them of our issues. Even when we have settled our differences, there's that evident resentment from their mother. I have tried severally to talk to my spouse about this. So my mother-in-law treats me disdainfully most times because their child informs them of our issues. Even when we have settled, there's still evident resentment from the mother. Praise the Lord, Brother Diola. Um, on to that, please. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's a very difficult situation that many people don't appreciate is obviously you're going to have arguments, you're going to have agreements. And in the, in, at that point in time, it might feel comfortable to go and speak to your parent or any other family member. Even when you've sorted things out, they're not going to forget the things that have already been said. So you two are at home, fine, but there are people thinking ill about the other, and it's only going to show in their behavior afterwards. Um, in terms of speaking to your spouse, I think you can only have that discussion when things are very, very good. Because that's when they're on your side. Because if you try and bring it up after you've just argued, they're not thinking about that situation. But it's when you guys have sorted things out, you're both in a good position, you can sit them down and explain the scenario and also explain how you're feeling because at the end of the day, once you sort once you sort yourselves out and if the mother in law is treating you in a certain way hopefully you've married the right person in the first place the person you're married should be what should want to be in your corner so when things are good you sit them down you explain and you just put your point of view across but generally as we've been told many times in church you need to be careful about the things you say because everyone else's memory is a lot longer than yours mm. when it comes to arguments. Very true. Thank you, Brother Diola. Sister Bumi Dada, I want you to sort of speak to us 
perspective of the mother-in-law. What should the mother-in-law be doing when the child, whether the man or the woman comes to them, telling them about these issues? Because, you know, when we talk about family, it, it's much more than the, the wife and the husband. What should the mother-in-law be doing? Sister Bumi Dada, can you help us with that, please? Uh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, the mother-in-law is part of the family. And until when the wife appreciates the mom as her own mom, that is when she can find peace. Um, if you still thinking as a wife that your mother-in-law has a boundary in your house, then mm -hmm. that is where the problem starts. You must uh, allow the mother-in-law to be part of your family. I have been there. My mother-in-law was with me when I was newly married. And honestly, we had it rough. But as time went by, um, I just understood there is no way out of this other than to just cohabit. And uh, not that I run to her when things are not right or when there are crises, but I made her to understand that our son has flaws himself. And she was able to recognize that because it took me a while before I could you know, juggle things around to say, okay, mama, this is how it is. And until when I was able to do that, she, would, she saw it and it was like, oh, why did you have to do this? He was called the son on my behalf. Why do you have to treat her like that? Why does it have to be like that? And until when we have that mentality, that my mother-in-law is also my mother. We cannot have it in peace. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Sister Bumi Dada. So we must engage with the mother-in-law as well. And perhaps by also letting them know uh, how, you know, how we're feeling in terms of, you know, um, um, what their children also do, maybe that can help, as Sister Bumi has said. Now, um, you know, there's this funny question, which seems quite familiar because I think I've, I've heard about this story before. Um, and the question is this, I recently had a baby and asked my mother, and, and, and let, let's not just say my mother, it could be an auntie as well, but I recently had a baby and asked my aunt or my mother to come and support with looking after my child. Now, my mom is having an affair with my husband. They have both decided to get married to each other. What can I do, Pastor Adeyemi? What can I do? Praise God. Um, I'll keep it short. Uh, sorry, because I'm also babysitting at the moment. Um, but to answer your question... <laughs> Um, in a situation like that, it's very difficult. Um, number one, whether auntie or mother, the person that is in question is someone who you trusted. Hmm. So your trust has been damaged. In situations like that, the most important thing is counseling. Um, Christian counseling, I would stress. Situations like that are best addressed um, according to the word of God. Um, so I, I am not an advocate of divorce or for divorce, but in that kind of situation, um, it would be very difficult for husband and wife to reconcile um, because of how deep that wound is. Um, so even if you are able to heal and forgive, it would be very difficult again to trust, um, depending on who, whether it's the husband or it, it can even happen on the wife's side where, uh, so vice versa. Um, but I would suggest Christian counseling, um, and that would take some time. Um, it, it, it also comes down to if the partner who um, has absconded with the mother or auntie is willing for counseling as well. Is this a marriage? That, I think there are many questions in this one question. Is it, is, is it something 
that the two of you still want? Um, is it what happened? What what led to this? Um, but I personally, I would say that they, they, they should seek counselling um, and if possible, uh, try to reconcile. If not, um, I'm not once again an advocate for divorce, but I would say it's best for both parties to go on their separate way. Thank you, Pastor Adeyemi. It's a very bitter pill to swallow. So I had to think, is it the auntie or is it the mother? Sister Damola, what is your take on this? I would say you need to know your battles and know your kind of person. If it's a kind of thing that deep down within you, you would feel odd messing the person every day and you're always out there it's not worth punishing yourself staying in it but if it's something that you can forgive and forget and let go over time then yes you can try as much as possible to make it work but if you're someone that you would it would make you bitter for the rest of your life then you might as well do something that will make you happy by stepping out that's just my own point of view praise the lord thank you sister mm -hmm. um th th this particular um question is for me it's a very bitter pill to swallow um so you know it, it then goes to our next question and um this this next question there there are a few questions like that but I'm going to just sort of read them all together. So how do I forget a spouse's infidelity or adultery and continue to enjoy sex with them? I'm also scared of being infected with any form of, of sexually transmitted disease. Um, and it, the second question now is linked to that. And it says, I don't know how to forgive my spouse. I struggle with unforgiveness. <clears throat> so the first bit is about the infidelity. Um, and now they can continue to have sex with their partner um, because they're afraid of, you know, being infected with any disease. And I think the second question, both of them go back to unforgiveness and it relates still to the first question we've just asked. So how do I forgive my spouse? I struggle with unforgiveness. Brother Dawudu. Um, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Good evening. I uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak on this. Um, first and foremost, um, the way we have to deal with problem of um, infidelity and um, before we go to forgiveness is we should always look at the root cause of that problem. Because um, as I'm explaining, it might be interwoven in between the two, okay? One of the things I discover about um, infidelity is this. When the two couple, when they are dating or courting, either way, are they, have there been any occurrences like that? If that has been, so it still went ahead, how are they able to settle that before they get married. Because at the end of the day, most of us, we're always seeing the end product of something, but we don't deal with it at the beginning. So let's say the man likes to have so many other partners. How are you able to deal with it before you get married? Because if you don't deal with that, it will reoccur when you get married. And a lot of us, because um, when it, time and age of a lot of people who are desperate for something. They overlook and they said, oh, I will get over it. Or it will get over it. A problem is always waiting there for everyone. It's only the day that you manifest that we don't know. So let's say now it has happened, it has happened. Now you need to ask that person, why did you do that? So it needs to explain. And when it explained, so you might look at it, whether it's a psychological problem or otherwise. If it's a psychological problem, then you can go to a therapist and say, this is the issue. 
then you you have to understand but i know at that point it's very very difficult for whoever that is clean among the two of them to think straight but you just have to support if you actually really love each other because at the end of the day what you want is unity but something must have led either party into that kind of um situation it might be negligent it might be not giving attention to your wife or different kind of issue so you need to sit down like mommy have said earlier on communication is the key it's very very vital if you can't discuss your issue and in that kind of situation don't hide your feeling don't hide anything it's because when we hide our feelings when we hide what we are going through and somebody else outside does say oh uh, you are looking good maybe your husband don't say that to you or your wife don't say that to you so you know that this is where the problem is coming from so so the, what i would say in that kind of situation is what causes it are you at fault or is just the person that intended to do it then you need to talk about it i know that uh, the way i'm saying it is not really um kind of easy like that but you have to come and sit down and really talk face to face and talk and say the truth then in terms of whether the guy or the woman or the man is going to have disease once you know when the um, when everything be blown up and you know that one of you is having infidelity the most important thing if you still love each other you need to go for medical checkup to see that either party is still clean if they sanctify you that you are clean then another thing is that i believe is um like mommy spoke to me um sometimes i believe that the two parties should have somebody that they, they fear that can tell them the truth so the, maybe i mean most time i recommend good pastor like uh, pastor atunuke you can book an appointment and tell this is our issue they'll be able to talk to them and tell them open the bible or the bible console them i mean have them to come one or two or three times so that they will know exactly what they are doing okay and that's one that's one method of solving it then when it comes to forgiveness uh, it's difficult it's difficult it's difficult not to forget but it's easy to forgive because you can't forget but with time whoever have breached um the trust needs to work three times higher for three times more for that person to regain that trust back because it's not easy once trust is broken it's very very difficult to regain it but you must learn how to forgive and that person have to put himself or herself in a position of trust that i can be trusted again if if those things are not there now um, it's like they're just doing charge play because they need to deal with the root and they need to forgive because if you keep thinking about it and you don't forgive the unforgiveness might lead to the separation of the two of them the unforgiveness so we must learn how to forgive and the person who have committed that thing must make a concerted effort to make sure that such thing do not repeat and if what is going to re, uh, what is going to lead him or her to do that thing again move away from that environment or move away from that person because once it's kissing that person it's more likely that after some time it's like a grass when you cut it at the top you don't uproot it it's a matter of time before it grow up again so what i believe is avoid contact with the person you are doing it with and make sure that you discipline yourself not to go into it again that's what i can say thank you so much brother tayo for that um sister dada you know brother tayo has said so much on what you know the parties can do and um um, you know, the steps that they can take in terms of the man trying to avoid that, both of them have medical checkups and all that. But I think the key thing here is this sister is really struggling, I, I believe it's a sister, is really struggling with unforgiveness. What, but Ataya has said that 
you know, the, the, the sister has to forgive, but they might not forget. But what steps can this sister do? Especially where, like Baratayo mentioned something, what if the infidelity is a consistent thing? What steps can this person take in order to completely forgive and not live in bitterness? Please help us now. First of all. Hallelujah. Uh, first and foremost, uh, the woman in question should associate with uh, people who have uh, family values. You don't just talk to people about your home. You must see that they respect family values so much that they would protect your family. Yes. Again, uh, we must try as much as possible to be under uh, spiritual head. Somebody that is accountable. A man of God, it could be a man of God, it could be the members of your family, it could be somebody at work that you know has got great experiences in marriage. Uh, we sometimes we make a lot of mistakes talking to everybody about our problems, and most times we are talking to the wrong people. Um, and that is why I said we must look for people that are accountable. If the sister is a very good Christian, if she's a church member, I think she needs counseling. And first and foremost, every one of us that have been in marriage, we've been there. I use mine as a case study when I have opportunity to talk to people about it. I'll tell you what, men would always be what they want to be. But it's not left for us as Christians, as children of God, to learn to go to God on our knees before even talking to people that I have said earlier on that they are accountable. Because sometimes you feel it is your emotions that will tell you, oh, it's my pastor is accountable. But most of the time, they are not really account accountable. So we should go on our knees to talk to God about our problems first before going to any man. Go to God sincerely in the sincerity of your heart. Lord, this is what I'm passing through. You brought these people together. You brought us together for a purpose. And this is what I'm going through. Well, will you, first and foremost, you must have satisfied all the pathways to excellence marriage. You have tried this, you have tried that, you have tried this, you have tried that. It's not working. Now you go back to God. God, what else? During the process of, you know, having dialogue with God, you might be led to who to speak to, even to the men of God or to ministers or to whoever that will be of help. So we should learn as much as possible. When it comes to issue of fornication, adultery, I tell you what, it is a bitter pill to swallow. But when it happens, we can't be cause of that. Say so we are going to give up, especially when children are involved. We need to take it as it has come and we go back to God, then we seek help. Spiritual help, not physical. Praise Amen. the Lord. Thank you so much, Ma. I'm very conscious of time. Thank you, Brother Tayo and Sister Dada, for that. That was very helpful. I'm sure the sister or the brother knows what to do now. Um, this next question I will be asking Pastor Adeyemi. I've seen many married couples enduring and not enjoying their marriage. I'm a single person. And I've seen many married couples enduring and not enjoying their marriage. I want mine to work. Kindly advise on things that I can do. Pastor Adeyemi, sir. Thank you very much. Um, ma marriage is work. Um, but before you even get to that place of marriage, um, I, I quickly want to say just because you've seen 
things in other marriages is not guarantee that those things that you have seen would reoccur in your own. Um, because every marriage is different. It's, it's almost like DNA. Uh, every DNA is different. Every marriage is different. Um, so th things you can do, well, number one, work on singleness. I think so many people are in a rush to be married. Uh, and I, I, I get it because society also makes you feel like there's something wrong with you if you're not in a relationship. But I, I feel that so many people who are now in relationships or in marriage haven't spent enough time in singlehood. Um, and singleness in itself teaches you a lot about yourself, how patient you are, uh, what you stand for, what you believe in, what your principles are. So before even thinking of getting into a relationship or even married, I would first say go on that adventure to discover who you are. So that by the time you do get into a relationship with someone, you're not looking for that person to complete you, but that person has come into your life in many ways to just complement who you are. Um, so in terms of things you can do um, with, with oh, if, if I'm not mistaken, I believe the question was things you can do with your partner. What was that the question? Sorry. Not, not exactly, but that could be that could be some of the ideas that we could share with this person. But they just, I think they 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 they've just seen too many marriages fail, and but they want to make sure that there's work. And so, what are the things that they can do to ensure that it works? First, okay, I think so, they're living in fear already. Yes, they're, they're living in fear, and and the truth of the matter is, there is no there is no recipe, um, there is no direct recipe to say do this and your marriage would work simply because every marriage is different and every person in the marriage is different. But there are things that you can do with your partner if you are in a relationship that can spice up your marriage. For example, I've said it before, go on date nights, travel together, um, you know, uh, spend time with each other's family more. Um, th there are multiple things you can do um, as a couple that will ignite your love even before you get to the place of marriage. But there isn't a specific recipe uh, that we can lay down to say, if you wish to have a successful marriage, these are the steps you should follow because everybody's marriage is different and everyone in that marriage is different as well. Um, but I, I, I would say to that person, number one, you need to deal with the fear of being married and having mistakes in, or, or seeing mistakes or cracks in your marriage because every marriage has cracks and in every marriage there are mistakes that we would make so that fear is the first thing that you have to deal with the second thing that you have to deal with is coming to the place to um, coming to a place of realization to understand that you're not perfect and nobody is um, you know every relationship has its faults every relationship has its uh, disappointments its cracks even us at times there are things that we come into relationships or marriage with um, in terms of baggage that we have to deal with. Um, and then the third thing I will say is um, expectation. It, 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 it's good to know what you are ex or what you desire out of a relationship. It's good for the person that you want to be in a relationship with. It's good for them to know what you expect or what you desire out of that relationship so that they can work on meeting your needs. Um, but th those are the things that I would say to that person. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Yemi. So there are no 100 keys to a successful marriage. In fact, none of the keys may, none of, none of the 100 keys may open your door. Um, so we just have to keep working at it. Keep working at it. Sister Onyidamola, can you just sort of share with us some of the things that you do to at least to enjoy your marriage rather than enduring it as this person is you know, requiring from us this evening? Are there tips on things that can be done in order for this particular person to enjoy their marriage? Um, I think date night, like Pastor Yemi said earlier. Um, Sorry, how do you do that with two young children? You, you can leave the kids with a family member. Okay. Yes, going on a walk with your partner um, and sometimes you can even have game, game night as well, where you, your husband and the kids as a family, you know, you, it creates a form of bonding and you have a time to talk, you know, communicate, say everything that is in your mind, let the other person to express 
his feelings as well. And um, basically that's just what you, that's a little thing you can do, but you should also know the thing that works with your partner, you know, for example, if the person um, is not always available, sometimes you could just speak over the phone, you know, try as much as possible to create time. Even during the day, if the person is someone that works a lot, you can try maybe 30 minutes, check on the person over the phone during the day, or oh, how are you doing, how is your day going? So that one way or the other, you just have a mix of getting to speak with the other person and um, knowing you. what's going on in the life. Thank you, Sister Onye. So you have to be creative. You have to find new ideas and you know just keep the marriage working. And it takes two, you keep doing it together. Thank you so much. And um, my next question, I'm gonna take it to Minister Chima. And this sister, um, I believe, cause she said my husband. Um, um, so she, she's is basically about finance in marriage. And she says she takes, I take a fair chunk of the family finance every month with little support from my husband what are your what is your advice because i believe the man should be the provider so what would you advise this sister she feels like she takes a larger chunk of the family finance and the she believes also that the husband should be a provider what would you advise this individual to do oh, well <laughs> that, that 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 is a very that does that is a very very one of the very sensitive issues in marriage, of how you arrange the the, the, the finances of the manage the finances of the family. Um, I, I would as I would say very clearly that um, it is not right that a party in the marriage will see one party has been solely responsible for it. Uh, we are both in it together. Perhaps if if she would change or recondition her mentality that the man is supposed to do X and he's supposed to do Y. Yes, a man should leave, should stay in the position of a man as the head of the family and provide for the family. But a situation where uh, the means are not coming that way, the way God had not arranged it that way, then it becomes a help fit to support the family and ensure everything moves smoothly. But one thing is clear, that in the fullness of time, the man that recognizes his position as a head will take, will eventually come to become the head and will do what he needs to do. So my question will be to the sister, is the hus does husband have inability or is he willing to want to play his role actively? Uh, because that's another issue altogether. If the man, are there issues where the man feels that he does not want to, how does she also dispense the so-called income that she carries the family with? These are fundamental questions that are peculiar to that family. Uh, so my, my, my suggestion, my recommendation would be that to, to re-engineer the thinking process to say, listen, we are in this together and talk about it and discuss it. It does not call for fight. It calls for wisdom and, mm -hmm. and, and wisdom and application of that knowledge that you receive from all that you hear and you apply them in practical situations. And I believe that over time, the husband will come around and do what he needs to do. Uh, but by, by, by confronting it frontally will cause more friction. You don't need more friction as it is, but manage it with wisdom. Uh, but, but that God has put her in a position to be, to, 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 to be the person that would, that have the finances of the family at that time does not mean that she should see herself as a person. But of course, she has a head. We are both enjoying each other's grace. Okay, it's a combined grace, not one grace, combined grace. So at that point in time, she's the one that God is using to minister to the need of the family. So she plays that role well. And I believe that if the husband indeed is filled with the spirit and understands his role in the family and what he wants to do, that I believe over time, um, he would come around to do what he needs to do. Thank you, we should Minister. Believe, we should believe the best for, for every person. I mean, there's no lost soul. Everybody has a potential to be good, you know. 
Thank you, Minister Chima. Sister Fumi, would you would you agree with the statement that you know sharing um, the financial responsibility of the family should really be um, something that depends on the income of both parties? So, say for instance, the wife is earning say five thousand pounds every every month, and the husband is earning two thousand. Surely that should be put into consideration in sharing the financial responsibilities of the family. What is your take on this, please? You're muted. You're muted. You're muted. Oh, okay. She's still muted. You, you're you'll still have muted. to unmute yourself. Okay, you're good. Yes, you're good now. Can you hear me now? Okay. Yes. First of all, we, we women, we are... We are, we are made by God to support our husband. I think in this case, because that we are not sure how much the husband is earning, we don't know about the amount, but I think the, both of them, like I said earlier, communication is very, very important. They need to sit down together and write down what their outgoings were. And then, okay, who is gonna do what? Who is gonna do what? They agree together. So that once it's been agreed together, she will see that, oh, I'm doing more, he's doing less. But like you rightly saying, the husband is the wife is earning 5,000 pounds per month, and the husband is earning 2,000. The math is very easy. Obviously, the one any more has to do more by supporting her husband. But at the same time, it's not, I think where a lot of fiction is, is like a lot of, I'm just being careful of the way I say this. Some men are like, okay, you're earning this amount. You should be doing all, everything. It shouldn't be so. But like I said earlier, they need to sit down together and outline their outgoings and sit down together. Okay, and bring everything together. This is how much we are earning. So together we are earning this amount. This is how much we need to be spending. And this is our goings. So the outgoings, they'll sit down together. Okay, you're earning 5,000. Okay, we need 3,000 for your 5,000, and I will need maybe 1,005 from your 1,000, I don't know. And they come together and they agree together. But I think it's when women are saying that, oh, I'm ending this, is my money, it's my money. A lot of times that causes friction. Then your husband looks like, feels like helpless, that, oh, I'm not worthy. We have to, you know, help our husband to look like, look, okay, this is my husband. And a lot of times, sometimes in marriage, when a woman does something, she shouldn't be saying, to her, oh, it's, it's me, it's me, it's me that is doing this, oh, we are doing this. So when the husband hears that, oh, my wife is not saying she's one doing it, saying we are doing this, even it will be compelled to say, okay, you know, I think I've got like extra, uh, this amount added to what we need to do or added to this amount. So it will help. But when all the rest of it is being placed on a woman, because, oh, you earn more, you should also carry everything. But that's like I say, that's the communication, that's the communication. And a lot of time, if women, don't discuss this with her husband. You just go ahead and do it. It's the other time, okay, she's capable enough to do all that. Let her carry on. Because you just put it on yourself that, you know, I can do this, I can do this, without communicating. So a lot of time, like I said, it's all down to communication. You sit down together, you, your outgoings, you say, okay, this is how much you go out every month, and this is how much is coming in. So the other that is any 2,000, let's be realistic, cannot or your outgoing is better for a month is 8,000. I'm just exaggerating now. 8,000 pounds. And your, and, you, and your wife is any 5,000. Your husband is any 3,000. The math is very easy to see that the wife obviously is going to be putting more down until the husband maybe has to uh, go and brush up himself in certain areas to so himself to get a better job. But even if he doesn't, if that's what you see the man before you married him, this is how much he's earning. And you were happy with him then. You didn't have any problem that, oh, this is how much he was earning. You married him. So there shouldn't be that much problem that, okay, well, I'm putting more because if you're able to foresee that, okay, this one is earning 2,000 pounds, I'm earning 5,000 pounds. Our mortgage is like, let's say, 3,000 pounds a month. The man cannot put down 3,000 out of 2,000. So, okay, that our mortgage is 3,000 pounds. What I will do, I will put up 2,000 pounds. Will you add 1,000 pounds? It's all about communication. 
And you know, men shouldn't see that, okay, yeah, she has to carry everything. But even though she, she's doing a lot, you know, with women, if you talk to your wife and say, oh, well done, and you appreciate her, she will go extra length. But it's when men are not appreciating their wife and she doesn't say, so what? Are you the only first person that be doing it? You know, the woman is like, okay, I'm the one earning you, not even showing appreciation. Not that you be saying thank you, thank you, but just to show love, show appreciation to that woman. A lot of times, that's Amen. all women want, just to be loved, to be appreciated. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you, um, Sister Fumi, for that. I, I see here that the key things are communication and communication. Um, so, and, you know, it, it's about sitting, to, sitting down together and breaking it down, who is going to take this responsibility and who is going to take the other responsibility. Thank you so much for that. Um, Brother Diola, secrets in marriage secrets in marriage my husband is all my husband's phone is always locked wow minister chima please be quiet <laughs> my husband's phone is always locked i cannot access it it goes away endlessly without letting me know where he's going ah struggle it goes away endlessly without letting me know where he's going. Should there be secrets in a marriage? Secrets in marriage. Secrets in marriage. Yes. So, so generally, I, if I use my personal experience, mm -hmm. I don't believe there should be secrets in marriage. Um, so, so before you carry on, does your phone have a um, PIN password that Sister Kemi is not aware of? So it has a password, but if she was to ask me for it, I would give it to her. No, but does she need to ask for it? Shouldn't she just give it to her? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah, well, in reality, I haven't given it to her, but okay. it's not because... Um, You've got anything to hide. It's not because I have anything to hide. Okay. My, my phone has a password because I have, like, work emails, but the phone has to have a password. Okay. But if she was to ever say, okay, I want to go on, I'd be like, yeah, there you go. Even my, like my iPad, she has a password for my iPad. But as many times I've, I've, I've told her, she keeps forgetting. So, <laughs> so yeah. But, um, so for example, like when I go out with friends and we go out to a certain place and we want to move on to somewhere else, I'll tell my friends that, okay, hold on, let me tell my wife where I'm moving to. Because even though I'm not doing anything bad, I don't ever want the situation where a friend or somebody else will see me and say, I saw your husband at this place. And obviously my wife will not be expecting me to be in that particular place. You don't necessarily have to be doing something wrong for doubts to start creeping into a relationship. Mm -hmm. So I think it's best, it's best practice to keep an open open channel of communication and obviously people have their their reasons i can't think of a particular reason at the moment they might have a particular reason why they don't say something at a particular time they might want to delay it um but generally i think secrets are are best avoided you might even get some secrets that are even good you're waiting for it to be a joyful um piece of news that you want to share but you, by you delaying, it might cause friction within the house because the other person might see, see you behaving in a certain way because of it. So yeah, my, my, my preference or my view is that secrets shouldn't be had. Thank you for that, Brother Diola. I have another sub question to that. And that is, um, what advice would you give to women? So say for instance, the husband has provided the, um, the password to the phone. Um, to the to the wife previously and she's done something with the husband's phone that he didn't like you know say for, I've heard before I don't know who's told I've heard before where um, the, the wife knows the husband's password and has gone to you know take some money from his account <laughs> without his knowledge so what advice would you give to women so if you're opportuned um, to know your husband's password what are the things that you should be doing and not doing on the husband's phone um, to be honest, if you have access to somebody's phone or whatever, 
it just it still doesn't mean you should just do anything you want right we just have to be reasonable you just have to, you have to be reasonable the thing that you're going to do could it cause any issues if it was the other way around would you have an issue with it yourself and it might be worth okay let's let me have let's have this discussion i want some money let me speak to my husband let's have this discussion but if you're not speaking to them beforehand and you're just transferring it and you haven't informed them or it's not normal practice, then it's clearly not the right thing to do. Some people have a relationship where they do the transfers and it's no issue, but you, you must understand the barriers in your relationship, what you do and what you don't do. Boundaries. And yeah, the boundaries. And just because you have access doesn't mean you should do everything under the, under the sun. Thank you so much, Brother Diola. Sister Indamala, would you agree with that? So Brother Shola has given you his phone um, or he, he, you know, he just used his phone and quickly went to the bathroom. I saw a video actually of a man who was in the bathroom and his phone was ringing, he, you know, and the wife picked up the phone. The rate at which this man <laughs> ran from the bathroom to grab the phone, he slipped on the floor and still grabbed the phone while sleeping. So, um, Sister Indamala, um, Brother Shola has given you his mobile phone and he's just shown you a picture, just a random picture, maybe of a shirt that he likes and he's just gone to the bathroom and you, you know, you swipe through his, you know, pictures. Is that something that um, we should be doing? Because I've read somewhere that that's part of etiquette as well, not doing that. But do you think is the right thing to do between husband and wife? Sincerely, I think for you to be snooping around in the first place is because you have doubts. Mm. So if deep down within you, you know, okay, you're fine with this person, your husband is not cheating, what are you doing looking for? Because the more you keep searching, you would eventually see what you don't want to see. Uh -huh. So if you're just on the phone to look at a picture that he showed you, look at the picture and hand over the phone back. For you to keep snooping around and say, oh, you want to look for this, you want to do this, you want to do that, is because maybe you have doubts. And the moment doubt sets in, it's, it's not healthy for the marriage. Thank you so much for that. So doubt may make you do that. And I mean, it, mommy said something about not being healthy, you know, and I think it's not healthy as well, going through the mobile phone, because you're just going to give yourself unnecessary. Exactly, exactly. Praise. I mean, what is not. Exactly, what is not lost. Praise the Lord. My next question is going to be directed to Brother Tayo. Um, and this, this question says, it seems more women are mentored than men in marriages. Why are men not held accountable for their errors? I'm always told to build my home, but isn't marriage a partnership that should be worked out by both parties? Yeah, um, well, even though nowadays, um, even to take this church um, situation, for example, majority of the congregation are women. So, and if they are preaching um, good teaching, like uh, every third Sunday of the month about family, the men are not there to listen how to improve their relationship. It's only the woman. So it means it's only the woman who wants to carry um, that good teaching hope. But if the man or the men are there and they can both listen, then Every one of us and able to take that teaching home and start rectifying our errors and improving it. But where only one person comes in is the only one that did that. And when he's trying to explain, because you are not there, you think, oh, because of the African heritage where we came from, we say, Otio, I can't pay that thing, I can't do this. But time has passed now where we men, we need to be nurtured. And this has to do with parents, to be sincere with you. I might go a bit two minutes or three minutes over. because No, no most... you can't. No, you can't. We still have a few questions. We are very limited with time now. Okay, then, now, okay, then, then let, let, let me just say this. The way men are raised, 
our background is poor because hmm. parents don't tell men how to be responsible. It's hmm. like we grow up and they just throw us into the wilderness. And that's why we see a lot of us misbehaving in the marriage. I mean, women are more intuitive, more wise because women have already been groomed by their parents how to cook, how to tidy up their house, how to do this, how to do that. But men are just there to say, okay, you might not know have to go to the kitchen. Some men don't know how to cook. Some men don't know how to tidy up. Some men don't know how to do a lot of things. Some men don't even know how to communicate. So, and that God of man is going to a marriage. What do you expect? So in a nutshell, what we are saying today is for women to, um, I mean, we've come to a state where we are, they said uh, we've dried up now, but we need to pass down to our children how to train them, how to be responsible, so that when they grow up, it will not be a vicious circle. Thank you. Mr. Chima, please mute everyone apart from the panel members, please. Thank you, Brother Tayo. Sorry, I caught you quite short. We've, we've got a couple of more questions. Ah, don't worry, it's okay. Thank you, Brother. I am. I forgot. Please mute everyone, Minister. Thank you. Yes, so the next question now. I love this. <laughs> and I would like to learn from Pastor Deyemi and Sister Dada. Please get ready for me. And the question is, my wife is always tired when it comes to meeting my sexual needs. I am getting fed up, please help me. And before we answer this question, someone, I think it was Brother Tyler that did mention that a cheating man, we should go to the, you know, go back and check what's happened. So this seems to relate to what you've said. My wife is always tired when it comes to meeting my sexual needs. I am getting fed up, please help. Sister Bumiao, can you help this woman to stop being tired? Uh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, it, these are things people don't really want to talk about, especially in the church. And this is why we are having a lot of crisis in marriages. Uh, during our own time, no one taught us about all this. We never heard about it. They didn't tell us how what and what uh, intimacy is all about with your spouse. And ma, you only have where, two minutes, ma. Only yeah, two minutes. yeah, and this is why we're having crisis. I think uh, for the benefit of the singles amongst us, we need to let them know that the times of intimacy is very paramount in marriages. It is very, very paramount. Uh, I'm tired today, I'm tired tomorrow. A man, we have been taught, I think when we went for the conference meeting in uh, March, or February, sorry, February this, this year, we were told that the way a man is wired is quite different from a woman. A man will want it over and over and over again, but a woman would maybe once in a while. So the only way we can deal with this is for the men too, uh, to come into, into play. Maybe on days when uh, he wants to have a issue, wet the ground. Mm. It shouldn't even be on those days because those days sometimes can make you feel what is he up to. I'm not going to fall for that. But at least if you know that your man is always, has always been there for you, that well, this is the moment to support him. Because to me, I would say it's support. You're supporting him to do whatever he wants to do. And you must play along as well. You must play along to do whatever he wants to do. And uh, let me be frank with you, moments of intimacy should be seen. To me, it's a spiritual, a spiritual moment. It's a time when, well, you're coming together as one. Just begin to prophesy. This thing that is making him to go everywhere, if you think your husband is going everywhere, this moment is with me. It should be me and be me alone. You can talk to God without him knowing. So moments of intimacy, we all run away from it. But I tell you what, it is a reality that we must all face. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Ma. It's a reality we must all face. Um, so, Sister, you need to amend your ways. Pastor Deyemi, can you help us, sir? <laughs> How can this woman not be tired all the time? Uh, let, 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 let me tell you the truth. Um, statistically, it's proven that the women are not tired. 
um, it's an excuse because they are not connected. Um, and I believe I explained this on the last panel. Um, sex for men and women are very different. Um, if the woman is always saying she's tired, she's tired, she's tired. The truth of the matter is she's not tired. She's, not, she's just not connected to you. Um, sex for a woman begins with intimacy. It doesn't begin in the bedroom. It begins with the way you talk to her, how you notice her, how you meet her needs. Um, there is no woman who the man is performing well in that area that will tell you I'm tired, unless maybe she, she has a newborn or she, her hands are full with the kids or whatever else. If you're able to meet her demands in that area, she's not going to be tired. Um, and it, it, I, I do a lot of reading in this area and from what I've come across, um, it's an excuse. I'm tired on both sides is actually an excuse. When the man says I'm tired, in most cases, it's because he's probably getting it outside. Um, if the woman says I'm tired, in most cases, it's possibly because she's not connected to you. So it's, it's, it's an excuse. It's not really because they are tired. It's because they are not connected. Um, so I do believe men do need to learn a lot more about what it is that wires their women. Um, statistically, men think about sex or the average man thinks about sex every eight seconds. So that's a lot of images or whatever it is that's going through the man's head that arouses him. Women are not wired the same way. Um, so for a man, he just wants to get in, get out, he's done. Um, my mentor would say the first round of sex belongs to the man, but the second and the third round belongs to the woman. Um, so it, it's not just something you do once and, ah, yeah, we are done. You know, you, you've got to get back in there, you know, and uh, get your wife excited and help her out a bit, you know. Um, so I, I do believe there is a lot of education when it comes to sex that both husband and wife should go and learn. Um, yes, you can practice together, but sex is also something that I feel we have failed to teach in the church. So when it comes to sex in marriage, so many people are struggling on what I should do, what I shouldn't do. Is this right? Is this not right? I'm tired. I'm not tired. I have extra. So there's many different, there's so many different excuses. So I do believe the church needs to do better. And this is all churches needs to do better when it comes to the subject of sex between husband and wife and what, what you can and you can't do. But to be honest, I'm tired is an all time excuse. Thank you, Pastor Adeyemi. So women, no excuses. Men, water the ground. Water the ground. God bless you all. Um, finally, as we're going to round up um, now, one minute I'm going to give to each panel member um, to answer this question. Does a um, woman have a role in marriage? If yes, what is the man's role and what is the woman's role in marriage? So I will start with Minister Chima. Does a woman have, does women have a role in marriage? If yes, what are their roles and what is a man's role? One minute, quickly, one minute. Marriage. So I will start with Minister Chima. Does a woman have, does women have a role in marriage? If yes, what are their roles and what is a man's role? Okay, so both of them have roles in marriage because, and their role is simple, to build that foundation of God's church yeah that's their role that all that they do is to ensure the engineer the edification and building of that body of christ you get my point because that's yes. the foundation of where our whole faith comes from from the Praise home the you are able to build good good structures for the family for the children it will also impacts on society so they all have a role to play yeah. praise the this. lord thank you minister chima sister bumi dada thank you we all have roles to play and it's not spelled out in any way. We just have to, in unison, we do things together. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ma. Sister Fumi Aouli. Um, yeah, hallelujah. Um, I think I, I really uh, like the way Sister Fumi summarized it uh, about roles. I think roles, when we start defining roles in marriage, a lot of time we can go wrong. But like if you come together and agree together, okay, this is the way we we'll do things together. I think that's the way to play along rather than, okay, your role is to cook, my role is to do this. But there's a lot of things that we want to start dividing roles to just, we can be here all day. So I Praise think I'll just Lord. agree with what Mr. Bumi said. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, Brother Tayo. 
Um, I would like to separate um, the roles of a woman and a man. All what I would just say is um, if you have one mind. That's mine. Thank you so much, Brother Adiola. Um, yeah, I, I agree with what everyone before me has said. Um, generally, my view is life is very real and it's very flexible. So well, all of it, it can it's happen at any day. So generally, I feel like we just have to communicate between each other. Thank you, Brother Adiola. Sister Winda Mola. Um, I think basically the woman is meant to support the man um you should always um support because the bible said the man is the head the woman is the neck so basically the woman is meant to support and the man is also meant to take responsibility as well that is not to say oh this is for the woman this is for the man but we should both help each other to make things work out amen thank you so much pastor Adeyemi. can you round this session up for us with your thoughts on the role of both men and women in marriage? Uh, I believe the Bible is very clear about the roles of men and women in marriage. Um, the husband is the head and the wife is the support mate, the help mate. Um, I do strongly agree with that. Um, I, I, I actually do feel it's necessary for roles to be spelled out. That way there is no confusion as to uh, what role you're meant to be playing within the marriage. Um, if I don't know my role, how can I fulfill the need that you might have of me? Um, I, I do say to most people that when it comes to marriage, I see it as the husband being the engine and the wife being the oil. So wives continue to oil your husband's engine and husbands con continue to drive on and the Lord will continue to support us as we do so. God bless you all. Thank you all so much. Thank you, my wonderful panel. It's been a real blessing listening to each and every one of you. You don't know how much God has used, the, used, used you this evening. We say thank you. And we look forward to meeting again next month. On this note, I hand over to Pastor Atinoke Adesanya. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. I am yeah. so blessed tonight. And I thank God for all the panel. I believe strongly that you guys are filled with the Holy Spirit, the way you answer those questions. We look forward to doing this again and again. And I just don't want us to be just on marriage. It may be on the issues that we, you know, we feel that we should talk about. It may be our work, it may be our career, it may be with our children. So we are not just focusing on marriage. And we can just answer two questions until we know we get it right. We're going to do it again and again to get it right. And I also want to encourage couples and singles and everyone to please, anytime we are on uh, um, Family View, let's try and contribute. Let's bring some question up so that again and again, we can help one another. It's when we come together and we're able to share ideas together that we can help one another. And we are praying that we build a glorious uh, church. Once again, to everyone that has been able to contribute and part of the panel tonight, we want to say a big thank you to you. We love you. We appreciate you. God bless you for the time that you have spent and input that you have made tonight. The Lord take you to another level. Praise the Lord. And by the special grace of God tomorrow morning, I look forward to having you in, in that presence. So make sure you join us tomorrow morning and in the evening, power of prayer. Until we come your way again. We want you to remain blessed, enjoy your marriage. And to every one of you that is looking forward to a day of marriage, I want you to know that your case is settled. Amen. Have a blessed evening and God richly bless you. Keep the question coming in. Send it to Minister Tong and you can also send it to my iPad or to the church. We always make sure that the question will try as much as possible to answer. And there will be days that we also invite other pastors to join us. Thank you again, once again. We appreciate you. God bless you. Have a wonderful evening. God bless.